Ministry for Extraordinary Maritime Engineering, Chief Dieter's Log. Our designs are working. The battleship named Turpitz has successfully held its own in an encounter with a British battle group. The unusual combination of 18, 9 and 8 inch guns turns out to work well against the British fleet. There are some things that I already noticed should be improved. The 8 inch guns need a bigger ammunition capacity. The ship also either needs to be able to detect torpedoes earlier, be protected better against them, or turn faster to get out of their way. What I am very interested in is a battle test of the Battle Destroyer, as they have come to be known. The battle cruisers are armed with torpedo launchers. The Admiralty decided to post them in Danzig for some reason. I've dropped a few hints that they need to be moved up to the front line for testing. I just received word that they have cast off from Danzig en route to their new home port of Wilhelmshaven. I have a design ready for another battleship, a ship blistering with smaller caliber guns and heavily armored. Sadly, the Admiral has vetoed this idea. A ship like that would need to get closer to the British fleets to be effective. The British cruisers are armed with a lot of torpedo launchers, which would make this ship entirely unfeasible. The Admiral requested that we come up with a more agile design capable of hunting down their torpedo cruisers. This has proven to be more difficult than I thought. A destroyer or light cruiser cannot be armored enough to be effective. A heavy cruiser or battle cruiser could work, but a combination of speed and firepower is taxing for the displacement of the ship. A battleship is overkill when facing a cruiser. They will also take well over two years to build. I'll have to sleep on this and come up with something else. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 4 of the meme campaign. We're going to start this one off with a destroyer ambush. The Turpits, or the Derpits, if you will, is being ambushed by a ton of destroyers. We have 3, 6, 10, 11 destroyers coming at the Turpits. This is 11 out of their 18 destroyers. Now, Turpits is armed with an unusual setup and might be able to influence the battle by using her 18 inch guns to blow the ships away. If she doesn't get jumped on by all these destroyers, they are currently a mere 8 kilometers away, so I think it's time to beat a hasty retreat. Try and angle as much as possible to allow the 18 inch guns to still be effective and rely upon the 9 inch guns and potentially the 4s to deal with those British destroyers. Now this ship has a modest Hydro 3, so I am quite concerned about her ability to detect torpedoes before it is too late. Of course these British DDs are immediately opening up, as well they should. This is going to be a pretty risky encounter for the Derpits. 18 inch turret is turning pretty slowly. Fortunately, they're pretty close. So we have a pretty reasonable chance of hitting them with all of our different calibers, including the 4 inch. And they fire at a nice round of, uh, nice uh, rate of fire. They only take 7.5 seconds to reload. Turpit is on fire. Let's slow you down. Come on, get me one good 18 inch hit. Well, just the one. Oh, that was... <laughs> that ripple effect, that was the 18-inch splash. <laughs> if that would have hit, that would have been beautiful. That would have been absolutely glorious. Now, I am expecting a load of torpedoes to be coming my way. So I'm already going to start zigzagging. Trying to throw off as many torpedoes as possible. And since these guys are all smoked up, it's not very likely that I'll be able to bring the 18-incher to bear anyway. Well, I might be able to bring it to bear, but to get it to hit is an entirely different matter. Sadly, I fear that the Turpits cannot escape these destroyers because they are definitely faster than her pretty slow 26 knots. It's going to be difficult to get this ship out of here. Come on, you guys should be just about done vaping over there. Your vaping pen lasts only five minutes, doesn't it? You should be fine. You should be just about done. They're all zigzagging between each other. 
target this one. Because we might be able to hit the other one by accident. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> we hit the Lawford. Lawford has torpedoes, so has Swordsman. Um, I have absolutely no idea which direction they have torpedoed. Other than that they torpedoed the battleship. So we're going to go hard over, increase back to flank. Even if it is going to come at the expense of accuracy. I need to make my ship as unpredictable as possible. And with a high engine efficiency, I can speed right back up. There. Several torpedoes in the water. Oh no. This is going to prove possible, but only just. Turn. Um, I fear we are going to get hit by this one. Come on, speed up. <clears throat> I need to buy myself a few seconds to get the turpits to change direction. Because then I might be able to maneuver her stern out of the way of that torpedo. It's going to be extremely close. Yeah, we did it. The turpits is out of line of fire. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> the torpedo didn't connect with the turpids, but some torpedo did connect with the destroyer. Are the British up to their old tricks? Yes, they are. <clears throat> the Lawford. The Lawford got hit by one of their own torpedoes. Task failed successfully. The turpids has detected more torpedoes coming for her. So we're going to swing right back to starboard. Here is another wave. Come on. Please don't be here. Don't be a massive swarm here. That would be very, very difficult. Yeah, no, 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 no. Shit. <clears throat> um, yeah, I will get hit by that one. I don't really see a way out. Unless I floor it. Now, hard over. Hit. Shit. Right on the stern. Stern took some damage, but no flooding. That's critical. So, without the flooding, <clears throat> the rudder's operational. That is extremely important. Let's slow you down. Make you a bit more maneuverable and just provide a more, well, ideally, a more stable firing platform to deal with all of these destroyers and allow your nine inch guns to do some work continue zigzagging secondaries on the Toreador which is not entirely British I'd say 18 inchers out oh shit steady as she goes I get very little warning on these torps Target everything on the Toreador. Lawford is crippled. These guys can still launch another salvo of torpedoes. Well, maybe not the Toreador after she got her torpedo launchers destroyed. Or at least one of them. Yeah, no, that should be the only launcher that they have. There you go. <clears throat> That's one down. Did you get hit by an 18? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. That was well over two and a half thousand damage. Uh, next is the Shikari. What are these British names? They don't sound particularly British. Come on. Get the 18 inch. Ooh, missed it. But she's flooding. We're going to cripple her enough for the 18s to finish her off with the next salvo. With a 0.7% accuracy. Yeah, this should be fine. Oh! <laughs> but it worked! Shikari is down. That was another well over 2500 point damage. Um, that's not really a priority to take out the Swordsman, but she's almost down as is, so let's continue harassing her. Now, I have a little bit of time 
to deal as much damage against these DDs as possible. But not a lot. Because soon, the torpedoes are going to start coming again. Yep, like right about now, as the Vega has reloaded. Tenacious, Moth is still reloading, Relentless is reloading, Forrester, Norman, Swordsman is still reloading, Lawford. Okay, so that means that the Vega... Oh, that was the first torpedo salvo from the Vega. Right, okay. That was their first salvo. Come on, deal with the narwhal. They're all getting pretty close. And the closer these guys get with their fast torpedoes at 48.6 knots, the less warning I will have, or the least, the less time to respond. Come on, give me one salvo from the 18s. I just need one hit. That uh, was not a hit. Narwhal is crippled. But almost reloaded. Let's do a gentle turn back to starboard. Relentless and Moth still loading. Forrester still loading. Narwhal is ready. Is your torpedo launcher still functional, Narwhal? No, it might not be. I know I destroyed a couple of torpedo launchers and some of the DDs. <clears throat> Just not sure if the Narwhal was one of them. Switch fire. Target relentless. When I came up with this design... I'm sorry, when the meme bureau came up with this design, I thought it was really weird, but... These wing turrets, these 9-inchers, as well as the 8-incher, they're actually proving pretty useful. Much to my surprise. <laughs> it's a weird design, but it kind of makes this battleship a jack-of-all-trades. Because it can deal with destroyers, and it can deal with a battleship, and it can deal with heavy cruisers. It can't do either of those particularly well. I mean, it might win a gunfight against a battleship, but not quickly. But it's just survivable enough. And it has firepower to deal with all threats. That I'm willing to put this thing against whatever the British throw my way. Relentless is flooding and not launching her torpedoes yet. She's not in a good angle. Okay, we're going to do a bit more of a starboard turn to allow the 18-inch to fire. Missed. Okay, back to port. Relentless is still not launching. Interesting. Boom! Headshot. And that, boys and girls, <clears throat> is an 18-inch no-scope. Oh, that's one down. Who would like to go next? Moth? Oh. You took an 18-inch shell. And you get an 18-inch shell. Everybody gets an 18-inch... Oh, shit. Shell. And I get torpedoed. <laughs> Thank you, Moth. And the Forester as well. And the Norman and the Vega. No, Vega's still loading. Hard over to port. Dodge all the torps. And at this point, I think the Vega is the only ship which is still armed with torpedoes. It's the only torp... There we are. It's the only torpedo risk. So that means I can start hunting. If I can eliminate the Vega quickly, before she's able to get those torpedoes to reload and launch, then I can very easily and nicely eliminate destroyers with an 18-inch firepower. So let's just have the turpids go back on the offensive. Because I think the bite... Oh, shit. <clears throat> Most of the bite is out of these destroyers. Boom! 3,000 hit points. Down the drain. Next target, Forrester. She's uh, fairly slow. Shouldn't be that hard to hit. Missed! <laughs> okay, fine. Maybe she is a bit harder to hit than I'd hoped. Aw, oh, Turpits, you are doing fantastic work. You are doing fantastic work, sir. Boom! That ought to eliminate the Forester. 
So we're going to switch fire to the Moth and the Norman. They are extremely close. 2.3 clicks out. That means that they're just getting very close to the danger... There you go. <laughs> I was going to say dangerous 4 inches, But the 18 inches are just as deadly. Potentially a bit more so. Especially with one hit. Once again, however, it shows that the 8-inch gun on the bow is very limited in its use because it doesn't have a lot of ammo. Dead. <laughs> oh, this is just evil. <laughs> Forrester. Good night, Forrester. Okay. Who else would like a shot? The narwhal. Is that your last? Because the AI is begging for me to quit. Yeah, I don't think so, Sunshine. You're not going anywhere quickly, are you? Little under 10 knots. Turpits, have fun. Oh, there's something else out here. Did I leave one alive before? I probably did. The British, by the way, and I couldn't quite capture this on video, the British have already launched a complaint after their uh, Admiralty has spent a ton of money so the British seem to already have some economic concerns about how their navy is run. This potentially opens up the way to cleaning out the British navy quickly. It does remain to be seen how much of an impact it's going to have on their fleet. But taking out a whole bunch of destroyers is probably actually doing them a favor. Because it's going to cost them a whole lot less maintenance per month. So, Royal Navy, um, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Come on, can we get one more good headshot? No. Close to the narwhal. Not deadly. That's the last few salvos from our 8-inch gun. Flooding. Actual? No. That was a lie. Ah, oh, she smoked up again. <clears throat> Come on. One 18-inch and you'll not feel anything. Just one 18-inch hit. It will all be over soon. Because now you're just going to die a slow death. They have already lost 34% of their crew. Pretty painful for that ship. Turpits is only... There you go. Only dreams now. Uh, Turpitz has lost a bit of her crew, 5.2%. She's lost a bit of structural integrity, but I'm not concerned. Okay, let's let that last destroyer survive. And, oh sorry, two destroyers actually. So they lost nine of them. No, eight of them. Didn't sink all of them, eight of them. Okay, anyway, I did get a whole lot of victory points there. And I saved the British a whole bunch of maintenance. So that is the tale of the Turpitz. Sorry, the Derpitz. She's going to be out for two months. But as we have seen, these battleships, for some reason or another, are not that expensive when they're repairing. As opposed to, for example, the battle cruisers, which are a lot more expensive, even if they're just operating. What do we have here? DDs or a heavy cruiser versus heavy cruiser. Oh, this is... This is going to be an interesting one. <clears throat> the heavy cruiser Witter versus the heavy cruiser War Spite. Um... Yeah, my heavy cruiser is not designed for this fight. I don't have the torpedoes. I don't have the guns. The only thing that I could potentially try is to burn the fucker down with four inches. I don't even have maximum bulkheads. Oh dear. I might up just running from this fight. Because this is not good. How can you spot me like that? <clears throat> oh, did I not put... Okay. I didn't put radar on this. That's bad. There you are. Hello. Now, in case you haven't seen the design of the Witter, she has a mere four six-inch guns. That's it. But she's packing a ton of four-inch guns. 
sadly, I don't expect that to do a whole lot of work. Um, I do expect her turning circle to be very useful here at 224. Because it means I can make pretty sharp turns. And judging by the amount of torpedoes that those heavy cruisers have, I'm going to need that. And the beauty of it is, I don't even lose that much speed in a turn. So what we're going to do is rush the Witter right towards the heavy cruiser. We're going to do some zigzags on the way there. Because I know that the War Spite has a ton of torpedo launchers. And I'm very much hesitant about closing to beyond, let's say, 6 or 7 kilometers. Because that means that the 4 inches are in range and that's what I need. Even the 3s at that point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Already detected torpedoes. Would you like to inform me where? Here. Okay, so that's the first salvo from the heavy. It means we can sort of steer to where they're going to be. Anyway, I want to close to about mm, six to seven kilometers. And then just let the four inch and three inch guns rip them to bits. That's the plan. The battle between the Witter and the, um, the Turpins, no, not the Turpins, uh, between the Witter and the War Spite turned out to be a pretty difficult one. Um, the Witter couldn't catch up to the Heavy Cruiser, so I decided to just disengage. These guys could do 37.1 knots, I could only do 35, so I really couldn't catch them. It is interesting, however, to see the discrepancy between my Cruiser and theirs. The uh, Heavy Cruiser on my side costs 55.7 million. Theirs costs almost double at 102 million. Very expensive boat they got there. Right. Okay, I'm going to do this one off screen and then I'll be back with another, let's say, more interesting battle soon. Well, this is not exactly what I was hoping for. Um, we have been blockaded. We do not have enough tonnage. The British have 904 tonnage and we have 356. So the British, with more than double our power projection, are capable of just closing off our entire economy. In um, about a month or so, a month or two, I set the tech budget, tech budget to 40% to just get another gun. But at this rate, I'm not going to be able to do that. We are still spending a lot on transport capacity, but it seems like I cannot keep that up. Uh, this is going to cost a lot. Seriously, a lot. What I could do is cancel building the shipyard out. Ah, it's only going to be 65,676 tons. It's really not that good. But I cannot really reduce this too much. I could reduce the crew training, but it wouldn't even do me that much good. Crap. Well, it's better than nothing. Um... Let's keep this at around 50%. If that tooltip would disappear, that would make it very much easier to figure out what I'm set to. There you go. It's going to cost me 18 million per month. Um, if I move ships, that is going to make it cheaper. It could be considered a bit of an exploit because, it's, well, I mean, moving ships shouldn't do wonders for your budget. It feels weird. We're going to move the battleships over to Wilhelmshaven as well. There. Now it's only minus 5 million. It's weird. But hey, we're blockaded. We're going to have to get creative. Ah. We have the name giver here. The Monmouth. We're in ambushing them. Let's do that. Let's see if we can take one of their heavy cruisers out of play. And this way, make sure that the enemy loses a bit of power projection. And with that, hopefully their ability to blockade us. Though I rather doubt it. Where is your heavy cruiser? Somewhere over there. Here. There. About 12 clicks out. Okay, we'll be there soon. Give me a minute. Now, what I forgot about the heavy cruiser in my enthusiasm, or rather about my destroyers, is that they too can only do 35 knots. I really designed a terrible fleet this time around. Because I cannot catch heavy cruisers. Not with my heavy cruiser, not with my destroyer. 
The only class that can do it is the battle destroyer thing. Uh, this thing. The Ryan J battle destroyer. It's still weird to say that. It's a battle cruiser that goes extremely fast. And we're about to see how well this thing is going to shape out to do against the battle cruiser Minotaur, which is 10,000 tons lighter. The Minotaur and the Adelaide are attacking my convoy, and considering I'm already blockaded, I really don't need this kind of attention. So let's see what I can do against their battlecruiser. They are spotted to the west. The Ryan J. Um, all in, in it's all the glory over here with 120 torpedoes for the uh, quintuples and a 60 for the quads. We have quite a lot of power. And then I got the V-15, which is basically useless. Because it really can't do anything. Um, it can't spot, it can't fight, it can't... Yeah, it really can't do anything. Now, I hope that this ship, with RDF and Radar 1, is capable of attacking, or rather locating, and then attacking the enemy battlecruiser. They are to the west, there. I do have 13-inch guns, but they're more of an afterthought than anything else. See, this is much, much more of a reasonable design. They carry 12 12-inch guns, a couple of 8s. Holy Jesus, 126 2-inch guns. <laughs> Don't let this thing near my convoy, thank you very much. Ryan J. Uh, yeah, with a turning circle of 919 meters, this ought to be interesting. Torpedo range, 22.1. Uh, we're going to hit that. Well, <laughs> that remains to be seen. Uh, but we're going to do our level best hitting it. And here come the fishies. At this angle and with this level of range. Oh god, you're already turning? No, you're not. With this level of range, um, this should still be a pretty decent fanfire. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Now, the thing about this battlecruiser of mine is that it is really not designed to get into range. It is not there to close the distance quickly. It is there to drop torps and run the fuck away. That's what this ship does best. Let's see. Nah. Unless she turns back to starboard. All of this looks intimidating. But is really not going to hurt them. What I could try doing is just waiting for an ID. Then figuring out how dangerous that ship actually is. Then waiting for the reload on the torps. And finally just close the distance and launch somewhere between... 20 and 30 torpedoes right in their face. <clears throat> Battlecruiser detected the torps at a range of 1.2 kilometers, and it is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I detected torps as well. Holy... Fucking hell. Okay. Um, that's not good for my top speed. I have maxi bulkhead, so I should be able to clean that flooding right out, but until then, I'm probably going to be going back to full speed. Okay, tell me everything you need, or I need to know about this heavy, or about this battlecruiser of theirs. What can it do? What's the threat? Ah, there's your light cruiser. There's the dick that threw torpedoes at me. Target that. Okay. 100% <clears throat> ID, show me. I'll go on then. There. Speed. 31.9 knots. Let's round it up to 32. She's crewed by cadets. Interesting. Minotaur has a pretty decent turning circle of 629, but a sonar 3 is going to make it very, very difficult to sneak up on her with torpedoes. She has anti-torp... <laughs> oh, no. It's like this thing is the perfect counterpart. It has anti-torp 5... It's extremely capable of fighting off torpedoes. Oh no. What sort of engines did I put on this? Turbo electric drive. Okay, good. 
that'll at least allow this ship to turn and speed up and slow down faster. Ah, <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Hold off on the torpedoes. We're gonna probably have to deliver these to the Minotaur pretty close, otherwise we won't hit. It's also gonna cost me a fort. Fuck off. It's also gonna cost me a fortune to get this ship fixed. Even if it's only a couple of percentages, it's still gonna cost a lot. Because these battle cruisers are coming in at 264 million, as opposed to their, I suspect, 140, 150, 108. Okay. Few bulkheads, though, so if you do get torped, and you do get flooded, you're gonna be in trouble. Even with her 12 inch guns, she's not that dangerous to my battle cruiser. Yet. Come on. Do some damage, would you? Because that light cruiser is pretty dangerous. I should do a full turn. <clears throat> I'm not interested in being hit by those 12 inches. Not very much, thank you. Alright, you. Adelaide. Stop throwing torpedoes at me. We're turning so much that the 13 inches have trouble keeping up. Yeah, we can pretty reliably pan that. To Adelaide, sonar array, sonar 3. Oh, great. You're just in a, a big floating sonar array. With torpedoes at that. So that means that my electric torps, or sorry, my oxygen fuel torps simply won't hit you. Because you're way too good at dodging. Sonar 3 with 322 torpedo sir, or turning circle? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So we're going to have to eliminate the ship first. Also because she's throwing torpedoes back at me and the Minotaur won't do that. There is one potential flaw with the Minotaur, and that's that they carry a reduced complement of shells. They still have 500, so it's not like they're going to run out in two minutes. But it is something that could be exploited if given enough time. Come on. Give me a good hit on the Adelaide, please. Just some nice high explosive damage to blow away either the ship or a torpedo launcher or two. There you go, good man. Flooding could kill the ship. Come on. This thing is about, there you go. Okay, we're gonna slow this thing down. And it should be pretty capable of slowing down quickly because it has a turboelectric drive, which gives you, I think, a 75% bonus to decel. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Yeah, right. The deceleration is not doing that well. Uh-oh. Okay, we're fine. Torpedo launchers on my battlecruiser are ready. Oh god, you sent more my way. Boom, more flooding. Please tell me that kills her. What the fuck is my DD doing here? You, come over here. Where's my transports? Wow, how far away did you sail? 40 kilometers. Oh well, that's what I get for forgetting about my... Um, Destroyer. Come on, Adelaide. Increase back to full speed. We're going to turn right into the battle cruiser and we're going to dump the torpedoes pretty much on top of them. That's the plan. Ow. Kill the Adelaide, for crying out loud. No, you missed. Minotaur, five clicks out. Four nine, four eight, four seven, four six. We're flooding again. 
There, flooding on the Adelaide. She's dead. Hello, Minotaur. Boy, are you in trouble. Well, I say that. <laughs> I'm inflicting damage with HE, and it's flooding her. Oh, this is amusing. Ow. Oh, they destroyed my turret. How dare you. Heart to starboard. See, this is how you operate a battle destroyer. You rush into the enemy battle cruiser and you blow it to bits. And you torp it. From 1.8 kilometer range. You give it a nice bouquet of torps. And you say, fuck you very much. Meme sends their regards. This is going to do the battle cruiser pretty nicely. <laughs> Watch this. Hey, you. You got trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Seconds from disaster. And disastrous it will be. How much damage are you guys betting I'm going to be doing with this? This is 23-inch torpedoes. You dead. You dead. That was 18 torpedoes and the destruction of the battle cruiser. Yep. Well, these things are amusing when they work. Uh, it's going to cost me, though, because this is probably two months of repairs. Considering the maintenance is 13.8 million, it's going to come... No, sorry. I think that is the repair cost. Good lord. Um, 13.8 million is the standard operating cost. 16.2 million is the cost per month to get this boy fixed up. Oof. Oof. Right, not a terrible episode. I did take out quite a few of their ships. Especially the destroyer fleet took a hit. But the rate at which I am having to run away from ships is problematic. So the next episode, we're going to have a look at some new designs and see if I can come up with something potentially a bit less meme but more useful to deal with their heavy cruisers. Hope you guys join me then. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next one.